I'm Kevin Cirilli. It's time for your weekly rewind. 50 Israeli hostages are being reunited with their families in Israel. The Israeli government and Hamas agreed to a temporary four-day ceasefire Thursday. White House officials say that the break in fighting could last longer if Hamas shows a willingness to release more of the 250 hostages. Hamas took those hostages on October 7th. That's when the terror group attacked Israel. Among the 50 hostages being released, three Americans and one child who will turn four years old on Friday. More than 1,500 Israelis and more than 10,000 Palestinians have died since the war started. Former President Donald Trump is beating President Biden for the first time in an NBC News poll. Trump leads Biden 46 percent to 44 percent, with 10 percent of voters undecided. Democrats urging to revamp his messaging and to show the receipts on what he's done so far on the job. But it's done little to silence other Democrats from flirting with presidential runs of their own. Democrats are urging Senator Joe Manchin to slam the door shut on a potential 2024 White House run. The centrist Democrat from West Virginia announced earlier this month that he won't be running for Senate, but he continues to leave the door open for a White House bid. A major setback for civil rights in this country. A divided federal appeals court in Missouri has ruled that groups and individuals can't sue for violations using Section 2 of the Voting Rights Act. What that means is basically that you or a group like the NAACP can't file a lawsuit to stop a state from redistricting voting maps to favor one group of voters over another. The case is likely now headed to the Supreme Court. Former President Donald Trump can go back to doing what he loves to do, talking about his critics. A New York judge has temporarily lifted a gag order in Trump's fraud case. That means that he'll be able to talk about the New York Attorney General, Letitia James, and her staff. It's not like the gag order had stopped him anyway, except now he can do it without getting slapped with a fine. Tech guru Sam Altman is returning as CEO of OpenAI, this just days after his abrupt departure from the company. News of his departure reportedly sparked internal backlash, and he was set to go lead a new AI team at Microsoft, which is a big backer of OpenAI. Altman's returning with a new team of board members, including former U.S. Treasury Secretary Larry Summers. And it was good news for two turkeys from Minnesota named Liberty and Bell. That's a big bird, man. President Biden pardoned the two big birds during the 76th annual White House Turkey Pardon. I hereby pardon Liberty and Bell. That's your weekly rewind. For The Hill, I'm Kevin Cirilli.